What up, peeps? So I just saw Tar, and it was a pretty amazing film. Now, what's funny is that this was by director Todd Field, who I only know of from one of my favorite movies, Eyes Wide Shut, and I had no clue that he actually had directing credits prior. So this shows how much I actually look into things before doing a certain video. I gotta work on that. Now, I was actually gonna put this as a recent watches video, but I wanted to do a pretty extensive discussion on this movie and why it left me with this resonating feeling. So this is actually pretty random. I wanted to try to do an analysis type look into this movie and what it means to me to the best of my ability, but the only part problem is I only saw this movie once so a lot of this is from memory so sorry if this feels sort of rushed and slapped together I had to get this out because I'm on a very tight schedule and I have like a bunch of other video projects that I'm working on so what is this movie well it's not for everybody I'll tell you that the movie undeniably requires a certain degree of patience especially since it's two and a half hours the film stars Kate Blanchett as Lydia Tarr a conductor with a massive track record in the music industry she also has a spouse and an adopted daughter that she thinks the world of and she's shown to be a pretty successful and charismatic woman. Now I think it's pretty obvious that Blanchett is going to get some Oscar buzz for this role and I personally don't mind her winning. Yes, that includes over Michelle Yeoh and Brendan Fraser who are also getting a lot of Oscar buzz themselves. But holy crap was this just a truly transformative and uniquely consistent performance from Kate Blanchett. She's not only one of my favorite actresses and also one of my celebrity crushes, but she's pretty much great in whatever she's in regardless of the material. One of the things that I noticed seeing this movie for the first time was some of the subtle in her performance. This just came from her facial expressions and her slight twitching at times and mannerisms that made her come off as someone who has a certain position of discomfort. This actually is incorporated later in the film in ways I didn't actually notice and it kind of shows her vulnerable side in contrast with her more confident presence in the public. Sometimes I get the impression that despite her humbleness she still shows a sign of uncertainty of the outcomes in her life. She seems to always be afraid of something that might be after her. Now at first I thought that she was having like mental problems or she was like some sort of schizophrenic. Yeah I was that narrow minded about her character in the first frame. But after seeing the movie I started to think about that term that people say how we're our own worst enemy. I feel that Todd Field was communicating that she was slowly and methodically becoming a victim of her choices in the past, a victim of her own moral reprehensibility. The film never spells out if she's right or wrong, and I personally love that, but it feels like we're getting a glimpse inside her head. I feel the film does a pretty great job with building up her uncertainties that she chooses to ignore. Her dreams and nightmares are part of this uncertainty of if her actions really do have consequences, or is there a way she could sort of swerve from the results of those choices. When you're as successful as she is, or just successful in general, you can have this subconscious and continuous thinking that you're not entirely untouchable despite your stature implying otherwise. She is, in a sense, struggling to adapt how art is being considered in a different generation. Whatever methods that she used in the past to gain her stature are unfortunately not in her favor in the future. One of my favorite scenes is this one and it's a scene with different shot variations with very precise cinematography, and for some reason, it was pretty tension-filled, and at first I wasn't sure exactly why that was the case. But after the film, I started to really think about it and I started to see what the film was doing or what I thought the film was personally doing. It was not only giving us much illustrated detail of Lydia, but showing contrast between perspectives of two different generations. The cinematography, the dialogue, the directing, the framing, the blocking, and the subtleties and the performances really give great informative clues of contrast. Well, hopefully you're not aware that it's a one or It was important that we always feel like we're with her. And, and, that we, and that we feel like we're with her at every possible moment. We were out scouting last summer and I said, it has to be a one -er, Um but I don't know how to do it. We can't, technically it's almost impossible. And it's a scene where we have to, it was important that, that she's in control of that entire scene. The first scene that mm. I wrote and I wrote it and rewrote it for probably four months. But it also shows that Lydia isn't afraid to express her thoughts on art compared to the student that she sort of rips into when he expresses his personal opinions of that same art. And this all leads to the student getting pretty offended and storming out of the class when she starts to get more personal in ways I don't want to say, but in ways that kind of make sense. But is this because this was something Tar was able to get away with in her early years of her reputation? In a sense, the boundaries have shifted against her favor, and this is, in a sense, the inciting incident that explores her character and the journey she goes on. This is also the point of the film that ultimately made me confused, and when I say confused, I wasn't sure where the movie was going and why it had to be two and a half hours. The film actually goes into pretty explicit details of her life after this scene. And for some, this is where I use the term not for everybody, because again, this movie requires some patience. The movie 
movie takes its absolute time and every single minute is not wasted. And why is that? Because there are so many subtleties of Tar's character that communicate what the film is building up to. If I remembered off the top of my head, we'd probably be here for a while. But the film to me seemed like a slow, long, and intricate house of cards being slowly stacked until the film was ready to completely knock it down, forcing Tar to lose the chance to come back from what's crumbling. And man, does it work. Such examples is Krista Taylor, who took her own life, and Tar to be accused of having transactional sexual relations with her is one of the few elements that really starts that crumbling. So I'll make a quick turn where this film explores that cancel culture thing. And for one, Lydia Tarr is queer. And that's one thing to take away from her character. But what she does in this Warner scene is while some will say this movie as a whole rip apart world culture, she in this scene dissects woke culture to its most ignorant element and communicates that art transcends what woke culture has exploited and tarnished in the name of political interest. I can name a few examples. And that's my take and not something that I can fully confirm until I've seen it a second time. It visually shows Tar's dominance of the class and her unfiltered passion. But in a sense, she's right. I mean, her art has been fully limited in its expression due to agenda pushing and you know what woke culture has done to it. Now she's been deemed to have very conservative ideals, but what I like about her character and how she's written is that she doesn't let her own sexual preference prevent her widespread perspective on her preferred art and her passion for it. It's a truly very effective scene that opens the gates for why she's put in this dilemma in the first place. But at the same time, it shows aspects of her that were unnoticed. This is why I feel some people won't get behind this movie. For the length, everything pretty much matters from one detail to the next, big or small. Tar is a very complex character, and what we learn about her is slowly revealed throughout the film. This also comes with her incredibly sharp hearing, and you can see that she is incredibly specific about music as she can hear every single portion of the music as a trait of her own perfectionistic mindset when it comes to art. The sensitive reactions to when she hears certain things always feels like what I can interpret as aspects of herself that are revisiting her subconscious. It's like an inescapable response from her actions of the past that can no longer hide beneath her successful resume or her frame. There's a dream sequence set up to where she is in some sort of lake area with a small flame coming from her bed. Then there's an abrupt cut to waking up to the comfort of her home. And in the film's third act, there's a scene of her going to Southeast Asia, which pretty much resembles the dream in a sense, not entirely specific, but it's pretty much a reset of her entire life after her incident with her client. And as she's actually assigned to do a concert for the Monster Hunter crowd in Southeast Asia. I found that to be a pretty satisfying payoff as it showed the eventual transition Tar was going to make when it came to doing her concert career. And before I continue, there's a long stretch of opening credits with the Capcom trademark for Monster Hunter in the beginning of the movie, only for her to do her concert for the Monster Hunter cosplayer crowd at the end. And I found that to be a pretty awesome detail. I feel personally that this harkens back to the beginning of the film that displayed her critical perspective against some of the younger generations who didn't really appreciate art of the past. Now, look, her. She's now doing Monster Hunter OST concerts for a crowd that loves the video game franchise. That's where she is. There's also another detail involving the Blair Witch Project where she hears screams from the end of the film of the Blair Witch Project when Heather was screaming for Mike. And as she hears these things, she's heading into the woods and I'm not really sure what it means. I guess it if there is some sort of meaning, I feel like there's a sense of unseen fear that we experience. And in the film, Lydia seems to experience that herself. That's just me. That's pretty much all I can get. Her relationship with Olga reveals a little more than we think as well, as she secures her spot for the solo part in the orchestra. And what I really love about this scene and how it's orchestrated, ha ha ha, get it, is that in our minds, after giving the information about Krista, it's interesting to see if this will go the exact same way, since Krista was also a young student of Lydia's. Olga definitely reveals her less innocent side as the film progresses. I think most of us feel like Olga is aware of these allegations and slowly distancing herself from Lydia, never advocating for her or giving her that same playful interaction from earlier. Is this because she was told to distance herself from her? Is this because she was in on exposing Lydia, considering that she would have probably already had access to this information? You know, it's social media of 2022. And we never really fully communicate thoroughly like we used to in the past. We're just not direct with our communications. So it's interesting, but also expect that Olga slowly and methodically distances herself from Tar. Considering Tar's accusations of grooming younger women, the Southeast Asia setting was a scene where she picks a masseuse after she was asking for a massage. And I think this harkens back to her chronic pain from earlier. And she asked to pick a certain one. And it has this nightmarish moment where she just sees them all lined up, organized like an orchestrated band. And you can definitely tell that her life has changed so dramatically that she now has these sort of reminders of her accusations, which is pretty horrific in her eyes. When your life does change dramatically, when things like this 
re-enter your life, it really takes a toll on you psychologically. Tara earlier distancing herself from her spouse. She loses an attachment to her daughter and her lack of communication with her spouse begins turning into what might be a divorce at some point. The consequences of her dishonesty is what I feel results in her detachment from the one person that truly loved her. And my last point is I was admittedly sympathetic towards Tar, but at the same time, Tar is a complex character, again, that is layered with background that results in one of the most interesting character studies I've seen in a while. And what's more mind-blowing is that this film is entirely fiction, and considering how this film advertised Tar as an autobiography was borderline brilliant, but it shows how real you can make a fictional character in a generation that struggles to distinguish between the two, between real and falsivity, and creating a character like that feels more real than any other character you'll see this whole year. By the end of the film, Tar becomes the very thing she teaches her students to let go of, which is her ego, and it just comes back to bite her. She was never truly honest. The movie plays like a slow burning symphony. Every instrument is an element of the whole thing, same as the film. Every single intricate element is part of the slow build and slow escalation until it turns into a massive observation of artistic power, resulting into the dissection and deconstruction of the art in the artist. And I apologize that this video wasn't quite as intricate as I hoped. This is actually a last minute thing and I wanted to elaborate more but I'd rather watch the film again and maybe I can be a lot more detailed in my thoughts. And if I get there, it'll probably be just a later project. But what I love about this film is that it gives you pieces to support your own interpretation. It's a very focused film that much like Under the Silver Lake demands rewatches that really get the full picture and I can't wait to watch this again. I highly recommend watching the film yourself if you haven't watched this video. And if you did watch this whole thing and you just disregarded my spoiler warning, I don't think that'll ruin the film for you. It's again, just my own interpretation and regardless of what I see about the movie, you'll probably have your own interpretation also. So yeah, this was just a quick video. I wanted to talk about the film. I'm working on other stuff and I got a lot going on. So I will see you all in the future and peace out.